Welcome to episode five of The Chaplain with Teachers in Cars Getting Coffee. Now, this is a little bit of an emotional episode, this one, because this is going to be our final episode of this series. And uh, I've had a great time catching up with lots of different staff, and I hope you have too. So let's pull in and see who our final guest is in the chaplain with teachers in cars getting coffee. Hello. Hey, Miss Pereira. Welcome to the car. Thank you. It's a joy having you uh, in the car for our final journey. Let's go and grab a coffee. Sure. These are crazy times. Although, just because we're isolating doesn't mean we need to miss out on chapel. So I'm bringing chapel to you. Each week, I'll go for a drive with a staff member. We'll talk life, faith, social isolation, and everything in between. Welcome to Chaplain with Teachers in Cars Getting Coffee. It's good to have you as our, our fifth guest in the Chaplain with Teachers in Cars. Um, and you are actually, I was just saying to people before as this began, that you are our final guest in the car. Um, Such a privilege. Yeah, and I can't think of a better staff member to have for our final guest. Uh, it is a memorable moment for me, being able to move chapel from a building to a car. And uh, I thought that's a good opening question, memorable moments in life. Um, this is one for me. What's, what's been a memorable moment for you? One that comes to mind is the, um, the season that I finished university. Uh, I'd been engaged for about a year and we were about to get married um, in January. And as you might imagine, after fin finishing uni, you want to um, try and get a job before mm. um, you get married. So I applied to pretty much every um, job vacancy that was available in the department and um, in all kinds of schools around Sydney. Um, sent around 11 to 12 applications, didn't hear back, um, got married in January um, and then on our honeymoon we were in um, Cairns and I get this call from a, a school saying can you come in for an interview and I thought oh great I'd love to but um, kind of on my honeymoon <laughs> yeah. so um, it's gonna be a little difficult you, yeah can you wait until um, I come back so we got back on a Wednesday had my interview on Thursday started school on Friday um, married honeymoon yeah. Job. Yeah, tick, tick, tick. I think that yeah. trumps doing chapel and car, <laughs> but um, only just a little bit. Just, only a, little just bit. a little just bit. Just a little bit. Now we've got, uh, we've had some of our students uh, have come back. So week three, yeah. all of year 12, and then all the other year groups got to come in one day a week. Um, and then it looks like we're moving back towards getting everyone back here pretty soon, but it has been a long time in isolation. Uh, what's been a what's been a blessing of your time in isolation? What's been something good? Well, a blessing is that I've been able to really spend a lot more time with my two daughters. Lily is um, in year four, and uh, Indy is in year two. Now, it's been really good to spend time with them, to kind of see them through the day, uh, to spend quality time with them, uh, doing activities. Um, before school and after school. Um, mm. It's really nice to, to see them learn. It's something that I don't really um, experience uh, being at school myself. Um, yes. I get an insight into the challenges that, that, that their teachers may have, but also the joys when um, they kind of have a moment where they learn something new and a little light bulb goes on. Yeah. Um, so it's been such a blessing to get to know them a little bit more. Now, I actually didn't ask you this before picking you up today, <laughs> but do you drink coffee? I do drink coffee. I am lactose intolerant, so okay. I have anything with soy in it. Okay, yeah. but you are good to get a I'm coffee? I'm good to get a coffee, definitely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've checked with all my other guests, so because we've actually just arrived at the cafe, so Excellent. I'm going to pull on in and uh, we'll get our coffee to start the day. We are back with our coffees. We almost had a coffee accident. <laughs> now, I was interested to ask you, Mr. Pereira, a bit about your journey um, into teaching because um, everyone watching this is going to finish school soon at some point, be it in six months or two years or 
there's always the question of what you do when you finish school, what sort of profession you should go into. Um, and you've had a really interesting journey in terms of the movement from uh, finishing school and then becoming a teacher because you weren't always going to be a teacher. Yeah. So what, what happened with that story? I've got to say teaching wasn't my um, first option or an option after school. Um, I was always into science and so were most of my friends. Um, I loved reading science fiction and um, I just pretty much fell in with the crowd um, after school. We, um, there's a group of us who loved um, science, so we went into engineering at UNSW. Yep. Um, so I was there for about two years, struggling um, quite, um, quite a lot actually, just to get through each subject in each semester. And mm. so I thought I'd take some time out, work um, at Ericsson and see what this engineering business is all about. It was really boring. Um, <laughs> and um, it didn't really, it didn't really um, make me want to be an engineer for the rest of my life. I met people who'd been an engineer for about 10 years and they, um, they had all the accoutrements of life, but nothing really substantial that I wanted to kind of emulate or be like. Yeah. So at that particular time, um, I was going to a, a, to a few youth groups Christian youth groups, um, just went to church with my parents and um, wasn't really, I wouldn't really call myself a Christian, um, was just a, a pretty much someone who just went to church because my parents went to church. I went to know a, a uh, Christian camp that one of my friends asked me to come along to yep. and it was a really good opportunity for me to spend time away from the routine and business of like just getting to uni and, and working and to take stock of um, where I was headed. And during this time, I was able to read the Bible a lot more, pray, and, um, and I, I, I decided that I wanted to ask God what I should be doing rather than just being self-directed. And I thought, well, that's a novel idea. Maybe yeah. I should actually pray about this yes. and not just um, go through what I think I should be doing because clearly it hadn't been working. I took some time off university, um, spent some time working, and I just said, look, um, I'll just let the doors open about, you know, about people speaking into my life about what I should be doing. Um, I met some teachers uh, who were at church, and they were really encouraging me to kind of pursue um, what kind of God wanted me to do. Um, and I, I saw that a calling is really important in one's life, and mm. um, through that season, I developed a strong uh, bond with um, these teachers who really led me along the path of uh, finding out a little bit more about myself. And, and through this time I spent with these teachers and through reading the Word and praying a lot more, I decided that, well, maybe I should do something I'm actually passionate about. Uh, all through university, I've been reading Lord of the Rings rather than my engineering textbooks. Yeah. So I thought, well, look, why not um, apply my passion for literature um, in, in, in life, yes. in my workplace. Yeah, that's a great story um, on many levels. And it's great. It's, it's also really encouraging, especially for those who are coming towards the end of school, that you often do feel the pressure that the decision you make now is the one that you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. But that's not true, is it? Yeah. Um, you made a decision, you went with it, it was good. But then actually, a bit later on, there is opportunity to kind of change lanes and do something different. Now, um, part of your story has been uh, interacting with the Bible yeah. uh, and just reflecting on it, what it means for you and your life. Yeah. Uh, what's a favorite What's a favorite part of the Bible, the passage of the Bible that you have? Yeah, so um, a couple of years ago, my family thought, look, um, why don't we have a Bible verse for the year to kind of reflect on um, and like, think about for, for a year. So when it comes to December, January time, we, we spend some time together as a family and decide on the Bible, Bible verse. And um, the one that we have for this year is Romans 12, verse 9. Uh, that is, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, Thing to what is good, um, be unto, be good unto others, and I think that um, that 
that passage with, with um, focuses on hanging to what is good mm. really is important during COVID. Yes. Because um, we often cling to what is negative. Yes. Um, as as people, and I think um, during isolation, it's been refreshing to see people kind of going back to finding um, what is essential in life and clinging to what is good and being positive and being motivated that way. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a it's, it's been a Bible, Bible verse. It's been quite good for our family and keeping things in perspective this year. Yes. Um, rather than kind of getting uh, anxious or upset about things that we can't control. Yeah. So, and do you want to repeat, what's the reference? It's Romans? It's Romans 12, verse 9. Romans chapter 12, verse, verse 9. 9. So yeah. the same challenge I had last week. If you are watching, um, you can open up your Bibles, open up to Romans chapter 12, verse 9, or go on BibleGateway.com and uh, type it in. And actually have, have a read of uh, the verse that Mr. Pereira has actually just shared with us because um, it is a great part of scripture. And I love the idea, you know, the, that's God's word. And he's saying, even as you follow Jesus in your daily life, you must seek to cling to what is good in the sense that, you know, the, the Bible recognizes that life is not always easy. It doesn't say follow God and everything goes well. But it does encourage us in the, in I guess the path to walk, as Mrs. Gardner said last week, following the shepherd, and that idea, cling to what is good. Yeah. Oh, it's a great phrase. I don't know if uh, if those who are listening, I don't know if you can tell, but as we have been driving, it has just started to pour with rain. Um, and we're coming to the end. We're actually just approaching our destination, and this is our final chaplain with teachers in cars getting coffee. We we're pulling up for the last time, but I think Romans chapter 12 verse 9 is a great passage of scripture to finish our series on and uh, to finish our time in the car. Uh, I have a gift for you, Mr. Pereira. Everyone who uh, comes in the car gets a gift, um, except for Mrs. Gardner last week, but she will be receiving that gift in chapel uh, the first time we're back together. Uh, but the gift for you is in the glove box. Now, it is, uh, I'm gonna explain it before I give it to you. Um, it's a pair of socks that you can actually wear to work. So you can bring into sacks as part of your thing. Um, and that's very practical yes. because uh, I thought, you know, you, you want practical gifts. Um, but I, I also saw, uh, I saw this pair of socks. I'm just waiting for these lights to go. Here we go. Uh, here we go. We're pulling in. I can't. I can't pull the gift out whilst I'm driving on the road. Here we go. We're just pulling in. Okay, we're back. So here's the gift. It's a pair of socks, and it has pigs with wings. Now, the reason why I got this is some people may have said when you decided to shift from engineering to teaching, pigs might fly. Oh wow! But no way. You followed uh, what you <laughs> thought you. was your passion. Uh, so you've got your socks, and uh, I hope you're a reminder of the time in the car, and also uh, the faith that you had to trust uh, God's word and to move from engineering to teaching. So thanks for joining us in the car. It's been, it's been a pleasure, and um, this is very metaphorical. Thank you so much. Yes, my pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you.